I've entitled this message, Take Your Place. Um, and there's quite a bit to read in Nehemiah chapter 3. I don't know that I'm going to read all of it because it, it does get kind of long. Um, and I'm, I'm going to read enough of it that you kind of get the idea. You get the, the gist of what's happening. And, uh, and then we'll move on from there and uh, uh, get into the message. Because sometimes I realize it gets a little bit uh, hard to sit and listen to all that. But uh, we'll read down through a few verses here and get the idea what's going on in Nehemiah chapter 3. All right. Uh, verse number one, <clears throat> the Bible says here, then Eliashib, the high priest rose up with his brethren, the priests, and they builded the sheep gate. They sanctified it and set up the doors of it. Even unto the tower of, of uh, Mia, they sanctified it unto the tower of Hananiel. And next unto him builded the men of Jericho and the next and next to them builded Zachar, the son of Imri. But the fish gate did the sons of Hassan, Hassanah build, who also laid the beams thereof, and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. The next, or and next unto them repaired Merimoth, the son of Urijah, the son of Koz, or, and or Koz, and next unto them repaired Mashalam, the son of Berechiah, the son of uh, Meshezabel, and next unto them repaired Zadok, the son of Baana. And next unto them the Tekoites repaired, but their nobles put not their necks to the work of their Lord. How would you like to be forever remembered in Scripture as the people who didn't come to the work? Right? The people who didn't show up. Apparently they thought that they were, they were too good for that, and the nobles didn't come. Verse 6, Moreover the old gate repaired Jehoiada, the son of Paseah and Meshalam, the son of Besediah. They laid the beams thereof and set up the doors thereof and the locks thereof and the bars thereof. And next unto them repaired Malatiah the Gibeonite and Jadon the Meronathite, the men of Gibeon and of Mizpah and the throne of the governor on this side of the river. Next unto him repaired Uziel, the son of Harhiah of the goldsmiths. Next unto him also repaired Hananiah, the son of one of the apoth apothecaries, and they fortified Jerusalem unto the broad wall. And next unto them repaired Rephiah, the son of Hur, and the ruler of half part of Jerusalem. And next unto them repaired Jehoiada, uh, or not Jehoiada, Jediah, the son of Haramoth, even over against his house, and next unto him repaired Hatush, the son of Hashabnia. Now, and it continues to go on here. You can read the rest of this of this chapter. I wanted us to get a feel. Uh, long story short, on all of this is that. Um, all of the wall was set up and on each section of the wall there was there was a person or a family or a group that was that was over that wall and together all of the people there in Jerusalem rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem all right and we see in this text uh, that there's people from all walks of life from all different kinds of of backgrounds and professions and, and all of this and they came to the work of the Lord and they finished the work of the Lord let's open in prayer Heavenly Fathers, we come to you this morning. I pray that you would guide and direct. And Lord, I pray that you give me the power uh, that I need to preach this message. I pray that you give me the, the words to say and, and the strength to say it, Lord. I pray that uh, your will would be accomplished uh, through this, uh, this message. Lord, I pray that we'd be encouraged. I pray that we'd be exhorted. I pray, Lord, that we'd be um, um, helped in whatever way we need to be helped this morning. Lord, I thank you so much for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh-oh. Somebody moved the... Somebody moved the Kleenexes. As I said earlier, the title of my message is Take Your Place. Take your place. Help wanted. Uh, this is the message that almost every business in America has displayed in their front window. For whatever reason, I don't know exactly what happened, but it seems like since COVID has has 
changed America forever and I think probably changed the world forever. It seems like there's, there's, uh, <clears throat> there are no workers left. There's a shortage of laborers like I've never seen in my entire life. The service industry is so desperate for help that they're paying wages that, that uh, really few can even compete with. Uh, McDonald's and Harden is hiring at $17 an hour. I think that's higher than the county wages, at, this, at least for the starting wages. I know the county had to, had to address some things because they were having a hard time finding people because you could go to McDonald's and make more money than, uh, than you could at uh, working for the county. Uh, this summer when we took some kids over to camp and I went through Belgrade and we were going to take the kids for lunch before we got on the road. Uh, I drove by a Taco Bell. The Taco Bell said they were hiring at $21 an hour. $21 an hour to make tacos. Uh, some fast foods are still struggling to keep their, their lobbies open and everything because they're just, they can't find help. They claim that there's, there's nobody out there. And, you know, I thought it was kind of, um, I guess a little bit of an excuse. I get irritated when, uh, when companies uh, don't know how to um, treat their customers. I guess I'll say it that way. And, uh, and so when I see these places that they're, they won't open their lobbies, but you can go through the drive through I said, you know, no, I'm going to go somewhere. I'm going to go somewhere where the lobby's open and I'm going to, and I'm going to go in there, but you know, it's, it's a truth and it's, it's happening all over the United States. There is just a shortage of workers. I read an article uh, in the wall street journal yesterday and it talks about the, in the, age sector between 20 and 24 that's only four years four years in that sector that there's over a half a million people that never return to the workforce after covid it's like why not what are what are 20 early 20 somethings doing i mean are they just playing video games all day and and what's going on and then from 55 and older those of us who are nearing retirement age right stan we're nearing retirement and I were looking forward to that. Uh, but um, many of them just retired and didn't go back to work. And there's a, short, there's a labor shortage in the United States today. You know, I've always been a proponent of buy America and, and, and don't buy this imported stuff. And, and if possible, I try to do that. And I recognize it's going to cost more money. I recognize. But uh, we need to, we need to uh, support our... our um, own domestic labor. But the truth is, if we brought all of the manufacturing back to the United States, I don't think that there's a, any way possible that we would have enough workers to, to, do, to, to provide that and to produce that. Uh, where are all the workers? What's going on? Uh, you know, this is the same issue that we see in churches all across the country. It's the same with whether it be pastors or whether it be missionaries or whatever the case may be. Dane and I went up and had breakfast with some pastors in Laurel uh, yesterday morning and uh, Paul Hoover was there and he was talking about all the churches that he knows of that are searching for pastors. And it's not just Montana, it's not just the, the Northwest, or it's all across the country. There's a shortage of pastors, there's a shortage of missionaries uh, there are more from one one report that I I heard. There's more missionaries coming off the field than going back to the field. Now, if it was because there was no need, that would be great. That is the purpose, and I believe that's the 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 aim of missions is to establish a work overseas that they can be able to pick up and 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 run with and eliminate the need for missionaries in in some of these places. But the reality is, it's just there's a shortage of laborers. Where are the laborers? We need more laborers. Luke 10 verse two says, therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. This I believe is to be a perpetual prayer that we pray. Lord, send more laborers. Nehemiah had tra traveled from Shushan to Jerusalem for one reason. That was to rebuild the walls of his city. However, Nehemiah was not a builder. 
He was not a general contractor with, with multiple years of experience building walls or anything like that. But Nehemiah had a burden and Nehemiah was willing and Nehemiah was available. So he went <clears throat> back to Jerusalem. He had a job to do and he was going to do it. Here in our text this morning, we see that Nehemiah needed laborers as well, and he found them. Where did he find them? Well, he found them wherever he could get them. If you notice from the reading this morning, from, from those passages that I, read, that I read, those who were on the wall were not necessarily masons. They were not necessarily carpenters. They were not necessarily trained in this, in this practice or in this profession of, of wall building and, and, and gate hanging and, and all that kind of stuff. We see there's goldsmiths in there and there were apothe apothecaries and there were, there were rulers and there were, there were all kinds of people from every walk, not every walk of life, but from every, I guess every walk of life, every, every level that you can imagine, right? Um, there were people from, from everything and, and, and there, they weren't necessarily trained for this, but they were available and they were willing and they were ready to go to the work, right? They were all ready to pitch in and work. The Lord's work will be accomplished by men and women just like you and me stepping outside of ourselves and doing whatever we can for the cause of Christ. Each of us taking our spot on the wall wherever we can and doing our best. Now, we're not all going to be able to, to build the gate. We're not all going to be able to, to hang the, the, the doors on the hinges and, and to repair the locks and do all of those things. We're not, always, we're not all going to construct a portion of the wall. But whatever, we, whatever needs to be done, we need people to do it. The point that I want to leave with you this morning is that if we each pick up a trowel or a shovel or a hammer, we can accomplish a great work. We can accomplish a great work for the cause of Christ. Now, make no mistake, you were made for this time. You were made for this place. You were made for this job. As I look at, at Nehemiah, I think about uh, what, what's going on there, and, and we're going to get into that in, in the message just a little bit under each one of these headings, but recognize that it's very possible that none of these people really felt like they were in their... In their um, in their place. I, that's not exactly what, the way I want to say it. They're really not really in their, in their, uh, in their element. That's the word I want to say, right? They were stretched beyond what they were used to. They were, they were pushed a little further and, and probably none of them really wanted to be in a situation where they're rebuilding the walls. Right. And, 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 and it, the, the Bible says in the book of Ezra, we'll get back to that uh, later on, that some of the ancient men, some of the older people that were there, they remembered back to the original glory of Jerusalem. They remembered back to when when Israel or Jerusalem was uh, all that it that it could have been. And they looked back with longing. And I have to believe that many of them, as they look back, they thought, oh man, wouldn't it have been great to be part of, of that time? Wouldn't it have been great when David was on the throne or when Solomon was on the throne or whatever the case may be? But the reality is that they weren't there, right? Here in the United States, um, we can maybe look back to a time where we say, you know what, wouldn't it have been better? Wouldn't it have been great to live during this time or another time? And maybe some of you are, who are here today, you, you can think back to a time where you say, oh, it was, you know, that's when the United States was in, the, when it's in its heyday. And that's when it was, it was strong and everything was going well. And we can think back to a time like that. But that's not the time we live in right? We live in this time, just as these people in Nehemiah lived in that time, okay? And, and we, as believers this morning, we need to step up. We need to, we need to, to um, engage in the time that we're in and in the job that's at, that's at hand. First of all, let's look at this time, okay? Uh, we've all heard of 
talk of the good old days, right? And, and I'll, I'll admit that I, I believe that there are some things that were better in the good old days and days gone by. However, I think that probably every generation has said that, right? The, talking about the good old days and, and every generation, even the good old days in somebody's eyes were once the modern days and somebody at that time was complaining that it would be better, that it was better in the, in the good old days, okay? Uh, the reality is though we can't pine for the good old days and let our day go to hell. Ezra chapter 3 and verse 12, the Bible says, But many of the priests and the Levites and the chief of the fathers, who are ancient men, that had seen the first house when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes, wept with a loud voice. Now, I don't know if that's because of the size or the grandeur or the, or the elegance or what it was, but, but they looked back at Solomon's temple and they thought, you know what? This is nothing compared to that. Oh, it would be so great to go back at, to those days. It would be so great if, if the, the the original temple was here and, and all that, but, but the truth is, it wasn't there. And it was never going to be there. They needed to just step up and engage in what they had at the time they have it. Right? Now, I know that we're dealing with a lot of issues. Many issues that we have never dealt with before in, in our lifetimes or, or in the history of the United States. Okay? But this is our time. This is the time that God has given us to live. This is the time that God has placed us here. And this is what God has given us to work with. Every generation has its problems. Every, every time period has its struggles. And, and we happen to be living in this time. And I've said it myself. I've said, you know, I, 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 I feel sorry for my grandchildren and the world that they're going to live in. But you know what? When, when, when it gets to be their time, I believe that they'll engage and they'll, and they'll do the work that they need to do. Okay? In the book of Esther... We see a young Jewish girl who was put into the king's harem. She was made aware of a plot to murder her people wherever they lived in the whole kingdom. She had the potential opportunity to stop this plot, but it required her to step out in faith, to put her own life at risk in the process. And her uncle Mordecai encouraged her to forget herself and risk it. Esther chapter 4 and verses 13 and 14, the Bible says this, Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Esther was in that place for this specific time, for this specific crisis, for this emergency that was, that was facing Israel at the time. She was there and she had the opportunity to do something. Yeah, it, 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 it put her at risk. It put her into a, a a situation where she was a little bit out of her element, but she, she stepped up and engaged and saved the entire Jewish nation, Israel nation. For such a time as this, what a wonderful statement that is. And it is a statement that speaks to each of us today. We can lament the day that we live in, but here we are. God knows what he's doing. He put us here to live in this time. This is our time. If it's going to get done, we're going to have to do it. Well, not only is this our time, this is also our place. This is the place where God has put us. This is no mistake. God knows what he's doing. Now, we can wish for a different place, right? Uh, we can wish that it was nicer. We can wish that it was cleaner. We can wish that it was warmer, uh, whatever. You know, wait until August. It'll be plenty warm in August. This is our place for whatever time God leaves us here. Maybe we'll be here until we die. Maybe we'll be called off to another place. I don't know that. But what I do know is that we're here right now. 
plug in and engage in this, this community, in your home. Maybe you've lived here your whole life. Maybe you've never lived anywhere else. This is your place. Maybe you've moved in later and for one reason or another and, and you're here and you say, why in the world am I in lodge grass? Well, I don't know, but God didn't make a mistake. We're here right? We're here in Lodgegrass. We're here in Bighorn County. We're here in Faith Baptist Church of Lodgegrass. That is no, no mistake. There is no question. God has put us here for a time. And while we're here, we are to be faithful in this community. Now, at the church level, we're here. At the job level, we're here at the community level. We're here. Now, this, this message might sound maybe like it's super church oriented, but I don't really want it to be super church oriented. I want it to be life oriented. We are here living in this time, in this place, and, and, and that is no mistake. And each and every one of us has a realm of, of influence that we live in. And that has to do with our, our church, obviously. That has to do with our job or our, or our business or profession, whatever that is. And, and, and then at the community level with, with, with different people uh, just in the community. Okay? God has us here for a place. And each and every one of you uh, knows that... that um, at least I hope each and every one of you knows that you're saved and that you're going to heaven and you know where to find help. You can find help in, in God's word and you can find help in, 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 in prayer and, and you know how to, to, to get to that place. And God has you in where you are right now and, and has the, the influence that you have so that you can be help and hope to those around you. Maybe you know people in, in where you work or, or in your neighbors or whatever that, that need the gospel and that they need to be told of the, the, the saving power of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done for them. And, 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 that, and you can share that with them. Maybe you know somebody, maybe they're saved or not, doesn't matter, but maybe they're going through a crisis and you can come along and help and whatever the case is but God has you where you are right now for a purpose God has each and every one of you working in a particular place engage there God has each and every one of us going to school in a particular place engage there God has each one of you involved in different activities engage there wherever God has you engage in that place I'm sure that many of those people who were working on the wall there in, in Nehemiah's day wished that they, they were somewhere else. Or maybe they wished they were living in a, in a different time or whatever the case may be. Man, if I just, if I had lived a hundred years ago, we wouldn't have to be building this wall. If we'd had, you know, if things were different, but they're not, right? They're not different. We are where we are. We are dealing with what we're dealing with. We're dealing with the political situation that we're dealing with. We're, we're dealing with all kinds of things. And we just need to deal with it. Engage where you are. I believe that many of those people recognized that they were doing something historic. Something important for the Lord. But you know, we all are. We're all doing something historic. We're all doing something important. If we'll engage and, 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 and serve the Lord where we are, it is just as important as those standing on that wall in Nehemiah's time. And those people were excited to see what God was doing in them and through them in that place. God wants to work in this place. God wants to work in your life. God wants to work in your particular circumstance. Wherever you are, right now, today, be 100% there. Engage in that place. Engage in the lives of those people. Engage in the, in the hearts and engage uh, in whatever way you can. Take whatever opportunity God gives you and use it for his glory. This is our time. This is our place. And this is our job. This job. You'll notice from our text that everyone had their place on the wall. 
It's spelled out very well. If we would continue to read all of that, it tells exactly where they worked. It tells exactly what, what gate they repaired and, and where they hung it. And it tells exactly what was going on. And, and I believe that if we had a, an understanding of the, the, of, the, of the city of Jerusalem, maybe if we look, could look at a map and we could label all of the things, you could go back there and you could see that, that uh, Benaiah was in, was in this place, right? And, and that somebody else was in this place and somebody else hung the sheep gate and somebody else hung the fish gate and somebody else hung the, the dung gate and whatever the case may be. And, and we could lay that all out. We could see exactly what person was there and, and, and what they redid. And, and we could specify the job that each one of them had. Some had a section of wall, some had a gate or a door, but everyone had a job. And no one's job was more important than anybody else's. Nobody was there, I don't believe, saying, oh, if I, I, I don't want to work on the wall, I want to work on a gate, or I want to work, whatever. It doesn't matter. Everybody's job was important. There was no job more or less important. No one's job was more important than the other because any breach in that wall was as good as leaving a door open. Right. You can you can build a brand new house and do a beautiful job of insulating it and put a roof on and, you know, do everything right. And if you leave the windows open, it's going to be cold in there. Right. Somebody's going to come in. The great, the great wall of China was over 13,000 miles long. Can you get a, a picture of that in your mind? 13,000 miles long. And as I was doing my research on this, if I understand all the statistics right, there remains about 2,500 miles of that wall. Because there, there were walls all over the place, and it weren't just necessarily one long line. But there's about 2,500 miles to this day. It was built over a period of 2,300 years. And its purpose was to protect China from its enemies. It was breached in different ways over the centuries, but in particular, in 1644, the Manchus breached it simply by bribing one of the Ming Dynasty generals to open the gate. Many of them, I read different stories about how uh, Genghis Khan, how he breached it in different places and what his strategy was and everything. But, but the Manchus in 1644 simply came in, paid a general off, and he opened the gate. Right? All of those miles of wall, all of those hundreds, even thousands of years of construction on that wall, and I don't know how many millions of people employed in, 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 in building that wall and everything, and just because the gate was left open, they stormed through and con conquered them. What an important job. You say, well, that, that gatekeeper, that's a super important. Well, yeah, but what if, the, what, if the, what if the gate would have been broken down over there, right? Um, if you're here today and you're a rancher, you know how important every foot of fence is, right? Every rancher knows how important that is. You can, you can have 100 miles of fence and one broken wire, phew, all your cows are out, right? Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't take much. Jenny and I have spent the last five years, it seems like, building fence. We've replaced or added fence around our entire pasture. And it's a good fence, if I do say so myself. We build good fence, all right? And our goats stay in most of the time, right? But the other day, I came in the driveway and as I'm driving in the driveway, I look out and in the yard is just goats everywhere. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? Now, that wouldn't be too terrible bad because we have our yard fenced in as well, right? So it's like a double wall. You ever seen those castles with a double wall? So if they breach the one that there's still another one, we did that so that they weren't always out in, in Alex's grain or in an alfalfa. And uh, so we built that double. But see, Jenny and I got overconfident and we bought some trees this year. And we're going to try to plant some trees in the yard. And <clears throat> wouldn't you know it, the goats were out, the tree leaves are all gone. Okay, um, maybe we shouldn't have done that, but uh, it doesn't take much. 
right? So I'm looking around and thinking, where, what in the world? How did they get out? The gates are closed and everything. And then, our, then I drove by this one spot. And I know that I knew, too, that the dogs have been crawling under this one spot. And, and it was kind of handy because, you know, <clears throat> most of our fence is dog safe, if you can believe that. And so they had to have some place to get in and out so they could eat and everything. I thought, well, that's easier for me. I don't have to open the gate. Well, the dogs are kind of big and that that hole got bigger and bigger and bigger and pretty soon the goats found it and i'm not kidding you there was <laughs> 200 head of goats all over the yard and uh, they're all through there right five years of work thousands of dollars of materials and one little spot and all the goats are out right every inch of that fence is important you can't neglect one spot at all you've got to have it all done and the wall here in nehemiah's day every inch of that wall was important every person's job was important they might have looked at that and said well why do i just have to lay these blocks i want to i want to hang a door i want to do something important i want to have my name on the sheep gate right no, that section of wall is just as important as the sheep, sheep gate. My point, every place in that fence, every place on that wall, every job was important. We can read about the opposition that rose against Israel as they attempted to build that wall. And that opposition, there was the temptation to not show up on the wall, to not show up at work. The devil can place this idea in your mind. Well, it's, it's only the fish gate. It's not the sheep gate. It's only the dung, dung gate. It's not the sheep gate. It's only the wall. It's not, right? Those goats will find it. The enemy will find it. And, 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 and every inch is important. Every job in your life is important. That goes for church. That goes for school. That goes for whatever you do, whatever job you have, it is a job that you do as unto the Lord. Colossians 3.23, and whatsoever you, you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Now, there are plenty of things that you can do here at the church. There could be classes to teach, projects to finish, cleaning to do. Uh, there are people to visit. If you have a desire to work, we will find a place. But as I told you, this message is not necessarily restricted to here at church. God has placed us here in this time, in this place, and in whatever your current job is. Don't spend time lamenting that you're here. Don't spend time lamenting that we live in this age. Don't spend time thinking, oh, if, if I only had a different job, if I only had, you know, different circumstances, if I only did. No. God has put us here. Right? The world needs Christians who engage their world. We need Christians on every inch of that wall engaging. Right? Not caving. So whoever you are, wherever you're from, whatever your situation is, recognize this morning that God has put you here for such a time as this. God has put you here in Faith Baptist Church. God has put you here in Lodgegrass or, or Wyola or Dayton or wherever you're at, wherever you're from this morning. God has put you here. God has put us here in 2022. As much as I regret that sometimes, as much as when I watch uh, the news or I watch some show or something and I, and I think about what's going on in this country and I think about what's going on around the world and as much as I look at that and say, I'm just, to be honest with you, I'm just ready to just go, right? But God has put us here. To deal with these issues in this time and is it harder to stand strong today than it was before I don't know because I've never lived before but he's put us here and we need to stand firm and we need to offer hope and we need to offer a solution to those who ask 
We need to be able to, to share the gospel to those who don't know. We need to offer encouragement and hope to those who are without hope. It, it, it never ceases to amaze me how many young people and, and sometimes not so young people are out there and commit suicide because they just feel like there's no hope. There's no future. There's no way. There is hope. And we know what that hope is. Engage this community. Engage this time. Take up this job and be faithful. These folks here in Nehemiah chapter 3, they got on that wall and they were faithful and they rebuilt that wall. Let's be faithful. Lou Holtz was asked, what is the difference in football players today and 15 years ago, what's, or 50, the difference between football players today and 50 years ago. He answered simple. Today's athletes talk about rights and privileges, and the players 50 years ago talked about obligations and responsibilities. This is our time. We are responsible for this time. Each of us is important. And the where and when of where God has placed us is important as well. You may not like it. It may not be your, your first pick. You may wish that you were somewhere else or maybe that you lived in a different time. But we're not. We're here. Every year about this time, I start wishing that I was living somewhere where there were palm trees. When we moved to Bolivia, I, I, I said, praise God, there are palm trees in Bolivia. But there were no palm trees where we lived in Bolivia, right? Uh, there were no palm trees there because it was too cold for palm trees. But that place was important to God. And that place is where God put us. This is our time. This is our place. God did not make a mistake. And we have a job to do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to you this morning, Lord, I thank you so much for, Lord, for putting me here in Lodgegrass in 2022. And I pray to Heavenly Father that you'd help me to engage where I am. Engage in the time that I live in. Engage the problems that we face today in this, in this country and in this community. Lord, help me to, to recognize the needs and help me to recognize that, that uh, every job that you give us is important. Every church is important. Every church member is important. Every person in the community is important. And Lord, I pray that you just help me to have that mindset pick up the shovel, pick up the trowel, and engage in this community. Lord, I thank you so much for all that you've done. I pray that you'd guide and direct in our lives. And Lord, I pray that you'd just challenge us today. Challenge us with, what are we doing? Are we complaining or are we working? Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If you would go ahead and stand, please.